Gurpreet Kaur, first year student of PhD from Punjab Agricultural University, Ludhiana, Punjab. So uh, I wrote, uh, we wrote a research paper. This is a conceptual paper, gamification as an effective tool for enhancing consumer engagement. So as we know that uh, this is the era of technological advancement. So with that, uh, the handheld devices are in trend, means they have become the inextricable part of human life. So, and on the other hand, the marketers are striving hard to gain consumer attention and they want to engage consumers. So seeking this thing as opportunity, uh, they have come up with the concept of gamification of their applications or websites. So now what is gamification? Gamification refers to the use of game element in non-game context. We all know that there are certain game elements like uh, reward points, like levels, like creating different unique avatars. So these game elements could be used in the non-game context, such as we can also use them in education, in healthcare. So this application of game elements to non-game context is known as the process of gamification. So gamification has been center of focus among various service market practitioners as the use of gamification has already been prominent in services such as healthcare, like my sugar app. This is for uh, uh, making better compliance to the diabetic patients like fitness, promote fit phytocracy, promoting fitness among people, educational apps like Kahoot promoting the productivity, training, energy consumption, development of loyalty programs such as My Starbucks Reward. Insley and Union in 2014 asserted that gamification of online shopping through various game elements can increase consumer engagement with online shopping websites. Next, the concept of gamification is becoming increasingly popular in non-gaming contexts, particularly in marketing to engage customers. Uh, and gamification is an emergent business practice widely used by various businesses to achieve goals related to consumer engagement in market. So gamification uh, is not only working to enhance the purchase, it's also working in uh, like uh, in promoting various consumer activities like consumers are nowadays more involved on social media, more comments, more posting their reviews. So these all activities uh, points towards the better engagement of consumer. Gamification can also improve consumer engagement behaviors beyond purchase. Here I have quoted one example, for instance, uh, the Nike Plus activity tra uh, tracking application converts customer activities into Nike Fuel Points awards badges for achieving specified targets and allows customers to post their accomplishments on social networking channels. So they are achieving, they are gaining points, then they are posting those on the social networking channels. So in this way, the businesses are better able to understand their customers' engagement behavior. Uh, so, uh, so far, the literature has empirically proved that yes, gamification leads to consumer engagement, but there was a gap that there is lack of common understanding of the underpinnings, which are leading to those game elements, uh, which are helping us in achieving the consumer engagement objectives. So uh, in this conceptual paper, we have uh, tried to uh, jot down all those underpinnings which were involved and uh, which were involved in uh, aiding this process of how game elements leads to consumer engagement. So the objectives of this conceptual paper were firstly to synthesize the literature and develop a framework that guides marketers on the process through which game elements impact consumers to aid the process of consumer engagement. Secondly, this paper aimed at exploding the behavioral and psychological underpinnings that bridge the pathway for various game elements to lead to consumer engagement. So this was the conceptual model prepared. Uh, based on the similarity of the traits of the game elements, we classified them into five categories. The, then how, which uh, behavioral underpinnings and psychological underpinnings they are targeting and how those behavioral and psychological underpinnings are leading to the consumer engagement outcomes. So firstly, the game elements were the performance-based elements. These elements are the soul of any game. Like they track the performance. If a person is performing better, he might be having more reward points in his credit and he might be able to unlock more and more level. So these elements are responsible to mark the 
accomplishment of the players based on the win loss decisions are communicated so this includes badges rewards leaderboards point progress path virtual trophies virtual coins next are the player based elements these elements are unique for every consumer means they give them a sense of personal personalization so they can be classified as the self expression and customization in customization they can customize the whole gamification environment as per their convenience and in self expression they can opt for unique avatars uh, next is interaction based element in this the interaction is among the players among the uh, players who are interacting with that gamification service this includes social interaction competition cooperation and feeling of altruism sometimes what companies do is they incentivize their consumer if they uh, or other consumers with their friends so this is a altruism next is interface based elements and the consumer so this may include the feedback narratives and visual elements or uh, um, other auditory elements also feedback is when you are into the play you will receive the feedback about your performance next are the narratives these are the story lines of different uh, games and uh, visual and auditory elements graphics so next is experience based elements these are the elements that provide unique experiences like uh, consumer may feel challenged consumer may feel novelty or curiosity uh, for example the introduction of slot machine feature in the mobile application of dominos is another striking example uh, if a consumer is unsure about the preference of pizza he may shake his mobile phone and the topping would be automatically chosen the consumers built a liking for this feature based on the element of curiosity and shared it further with their friends out of novelty of this game gaming feature so these are the behavioral underpinnings and psychological underpinnings now we will discuss them one by one the behavioral underpinnings were the social relatedness so the social relatedness result in social influence which leads to immersion of emergence of social comparison uh, here if we see that uh, as we have already discussed about the nike fuel points here see the nike fuel bands not only trigger the performance enhancement as, as the sole idea behind the gamified band but also enhance its awareness by triggering the social dimension as the whole community is able to view performance of top scorers displayed on leaderboard based on that it promotes competition that competitive spirit further uh, helps to aggressively participate uh, evoke participation from the consumers end next is goal congruent behavior according to the goal setting theory if the goals to the consumers are clear if the players have the clear goals in their mind they will work towards them and uh, this goal congruent behavior will help uh, ensuring consumer engagement next is task completion the accomplishment of task and completion of goals give the feeling of self efficacy to the person playing that game or involved in that gamification service so once the goals are achieved Uh, the self efficacy feeling will come this is a positive feeling uh, and the satisfaction through a cognitively oriented mechanism is ensured next underpinning is the flow experience flow experience is a state of mind which ensures that there is arousal among the uh, players the consumers are focused they are enjoying that game so we take care at 2021 by using affect as information theory found that gamification experience is fundamental to creating delightful flow experience affecting consumer engagement this evokes positive reaction and which trigger consumer engagement so the major uh, antecedents found are the challenge and the feedback if there is optimum level of good bridge we lost you i think your connection is not stable just wait uh, you can turn off the video and keep continuing uh, am i audible yes you are audible
Am I audible? Yes, yes. I, I asked you to turn off the video, not the screen share. Oh, so okay. Turn off the screen oh, okay, share. Okay. okay, sir. Just wait. Is my screen visible now? In slideshow mode, please. Okay, okay. The next is the perceived usability. So, if the consumers perceive that uh, the usability is okay, that usability is fine, uh, it is easy to use, uh, they will be better engaged with that facility. But if they find that it is difficult, they, may, they might develop a feeling of frustration. Next is satisfaction. So, need satisfaction, higher the hedonic value offered in the gamified environment, the higher would be the contribution towards engaging the consumers. Uh, next is the fee is achieved when a person knows that he is being challenged and he has successfully emerged out as victorious and he thinks that yes, now he is capable. This will give him a feeling of competency and competency is one of the antecedents to the feeling of enjoyment. Next is autonomy. When consumers indulge in gamified activities with their interest and out of the personal value, not being in control of the situation, rather they are controlling the situation. So this also amplifies their sense of enjoyment when they experience autonomy actions so now enjoyment decedents to the sense of enjoyment and therefore enhance the hedonic value next is focus attention focus attention refers to the degree of awareness of consumers and the absorption and the uh, quantum of time they are in, involved in that gamification service next is felt involvement felt involvement is the degree to which the consumer find that a particular gamification service is playful or interesting Next are the consumer engagement outcomes. Uh, the application of game elements in non-game context tend to increase the social use of activity and facilitates improvement in usage quality also because people are not feeling the boredom. So there is improve in, improvement in the quality of the usage and moreover, there is increase in the quantum of the use of activity. People are spending more time on such websites or applications that are offering uh, service in a gamified form. Next is co-creation gamification is an innovative management tool that enhances consumer interaction and aids in increasing their participation in brand co-creation activities, leading to sustainable brand-based innovation. Gamification is a possible value creation strategy. In many cases, gamification nowadays is also helping in uh, development of new products. For example, say in fashion industry, uh, the, the new designs uh, can be developed through co-creation process. Uh, here I have quoted one example of Samsung. Uh, Samsung has launched its own loyalty program named as a, a Samsung Nation, where consumers register a product on Samsung's website. Uh, they are automatically entered into a sweepstakes where they get a chance to win another Samsung product. Consumers participate in question answers, discussions, and sometimes write reviews for the products. They are then rewarded for becoming the active part of the Samsung community. As they progress, they are awarded badges. This is how Samsung is creating valuable content by engaging consumers. Since it has experienced a 6% 6 increase in site visitors, a 30% increase in comments, and five-fold increase in product reviews written by the consumer. Now see, this is how the gamification is working as a tool of consumer engagement. And uh, it is bound to increase the profit margins from the firm by increasing sale, growth in consumer loyalty and increase visits to the website. It also helps in strengthening the relationship between the consumers and the brands. 
it promotes the feeling of trust and commitment that if the consumer is involved in a gamified facility gamified service so he is winning rewards he is making efforts so if he is optimally rewarded for his efforts in the in that gameplay uh, the consumer will develop the feeling of trust towards that brand this aids in producing a loyal consumer base for the business consumers engagement is evident from the loyalty which involves repeated contact with the business in the form of repeated purchase for example in uh, uh, my starbuck reward points uh, if you are making repeated purchase you will have more rewards in your credit so the four mentioned underpinnings are responsible for continuous enga engagement intention from the consumers end so the major implications of this conceptual paper were that it aids in facilitating marketing managers and practitioners with the knowledge regarding the use of diverse game elements in the virtual space brand website brand applications or online brand communities like we discussed the case of samsung nations who are finding it challenging task to sustain consumer engagement the study contributes to highlighting various behavioral and psychological underpinnings that serve as a strong foundation to trigger desirable consumer behavior by engaging them via application of various game elements the study has solely focused on uh, now the major limitations are that that study is only focusing on the marketing domain whereas the future researchers can also work on student engagement in field of education on patient compliance in field of healthcare or in hr training and if each game element category is studied individually it may bring more granularity in future research and negative consumer engagement is still not much explored area of research with respect to the gamification this can also be interesting area for future researchers that if they pinpoint all the all the game elements or all the behavioral underpinnings that lead to disengagement so thank you thank you gurpreet are there any questions if no gurpreet i have some observations i went to the version which you sent also Uh, okay, yes, hold on, sir. hold on. Sumit has asked a question. I just want to know how practically, at what point we say some application is gamified. I mean some parameters as myself working on this. So, Gurpreet, can you address that? Uh, yes, sir. Please repeat the question. Ah, uh, Sumit is asking. I just want to know practically, at what point mm -hmm. we say some application is gamified. I mean some parameters as myself working on this. Okay. Uh, so. we can say any application is gamified if it is making use of any of the game elements so which all the game elements which we have discussed if they are opting for any avatars if they are opting for any reward points uh, to engage the consumer or if they are uh, opting for any such parameter that uh, uh, promotes a social interaction so we can say that yes this application is gamified i hope that answers the question let me see no there are no more so uh, gurpreet let me tell you something so if you are pitching this as a literature review paper there are multiple things which are uh, missing here the first thing is that if you if you are talking about a literature review paper what is your methodology so if you look into literature review right now you will see that literature review has diversified into a into a object of topic itself so you have systematic literature reviews you have literature synthesis yes. you have bibliometric analysis you have structural topic modeling so what yes, exactly sir. have you done here uh, sir i have made no, no, a hold on hold on hold on you don't have to answer me right now okay, okay, that sir. was not there in your ppt okay, okay so how okay, have you sir. selected the papers what was your time span what was your keywords what were the journals you looked for that okay. is one the other point is that the model which you presented is really not coming out in the discussion which you have discussed because whatever you have discussed can exist 
irrespective of the model and that is very generic i mean yeah satisfaction engagement will lead, satisfaction will lead to engagement so what's new in it where is game coming here so whenever when you are discussing the literature you have to be a little bit more engaged with the literature and using the literature and the findings you can actually build those relationships which you have discussed so that these two things are actually very important and i mean there are multiple issues which can be pointed out these are two major issues which you have to address before you can think this to be ready for some good quality journal to to be reviewed or to be accepted so uh, just think about it. you don't have to answer me right now just keep these Oops. things in mind mm -hmm. kamin is asking what uh, what the some metrics that are tracked by business to see effects outcome of gamification so i think what she's trying to mean is that how can a business know that the gamification is successful or not successful did you get the question gurpreet uh, uh, yes sir yes i'm just looking at the question just give me a minute what are the some Uh, the metrics in this case would be uh, same as that of uh, we are using in uh, 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 the online metrics which we are using in uh, assessing the uh, success of any advertisement or success of any uh, social media ads in the same way we can track that yes this gamified application is successful or not see if people are engaged with it uh, we, if people are sharing it on social media for example i have won some uh, nike fuel points or uh, i am doing better using the nike band and if i am sharing it with my friends i am sharing it on social media i am sharing my progress on social media so then we can say that yes uh, this is one of the metric that uh, we can uh, uh, that uh, that gamification is leading to the consumer engagement i hope that addresses the issue i mean we talked about a lot of things but i mean yeah so if there are no more questions we can move to the next presentation So do we have the presenters of sentiment analysis of celebrity endorsed advertisement? Yes. Hi, Sivranjan. If you are ready, you can start. Good evening, everybody. Esteemed chair, respected professor, and industry expert, and my dear fellow participants, the presentation on which the topic of sentiment analysis of celebrity endorsed advertisement, which has been presented by Sivranjan Murugesan and Dinesh Kumar A. Marketers are facing the challenge of marketers are facing the challenge of attracting the consumer through their advertised effort in their market media in their crowd media advertisement. A widely used method in celebrity advertisement is used that is used of celebrity advertisement in the marketing techniques. The usage of celebrity endorsement will increase the will increase the relationship between the consumer and the consumer and the endorser and celebrity endorsement has now become a globally globally popular advertising and marketing strategy which is proposed by nolan match 2017 and this point that the question has been arrived who is celebrity a celebrity endorser is defined as 
anyone who enjoys the public recognition and uses the recognition on behalf of a consumer goods on behalf of a consumer goods by appearing the advertisement the celebrity appearing the advertisement they can attract the consumer by transferring the meaning of them towards the endorsed product and miller and allen 2012 has proposed that while when a celebrity has proposing when a celebrity as endorsing a product that the meaning of the celebrity will be transferred to the product to their appearance in the advertisement the celebrity can be a person anyone who is or anyone who is a popular in the field of science politics science politics sports or entertainment and the celebrity have now become and this kind of celebrity are becoming the image of the brand celebrity endorser can be used to launch a brand maintaining and reinforcing a brand competitive brand competitive advantage and in repositioning brands the usage of celebrity endorsement in brand advertising has become more popular since the presence of celebrity endorsement influenced the consumer towards the towards the product through their appearance in the towards appearance in the advertisement and also the celebrity endorser may take a role of spokesperson on behalf of the company expert in the product field or a model to which the consumer base aspires marketers spend huge amount of money for making the endorser to act in their advertisement due to that due to that the spokesperson effectiveness of the spokesperson get increases and the product will be get product will be get influenced by the consumer and this influence can make the purchase intention towards the product and marketer expert that the celebrity endorsement will create a emotional tie towards the product or brand but and this could be will be transferred towards the brand by the association and it is the word proposed by him and also marketer also feel that the consumer has no self interest in the product and he loves the product due to that they endorse it and there is a and there is a clutter that uh, there is a clutter that the consumer that the endorser are endorsing a product by the by the self interest but it is not the self interest it is the it is the belief that they loves the brand which has been proposed by says eter previous research on celebrity endorser have focused on as found focused on celebrity endorsement as found that employing celebrities in advertisement has had a positive impact on brand attitude which has been proposed by till brand awareness which has the research proposed by miller and lasnik and attitude towards the advertisement which has proposed by mc karmi and the purchase intention which has proposed the chungan chow so at this point the usage of celebrity endorsement will gives a positive impact towards the brand attitude brand awareness attitude towards advertisement and the purchase intentions why these are the statement as getting as are the statement as getting as output by the usage of celebrity endorsement and this gives us the this gives us the interest of research on so this gives us the idea to do a research on this topic of sentiment analysis of celebrity endorsement research objective our research objective is to use the sentiment analysis to calculate the sentiment score of the celebrity endorsed advertisement and to use the score to find the impact of the celebrity endorsed advertisement literature review the literature review is fully based on the research objective that the research objective is to use the sentiment score and to find a find a effect impact of celebrity endorsement for match up hypothesis and also for high frequency and low frequency hypothesis for this the literature review has been carried out a more number of model has been proposed to explain the effectiveness of celebrity endorsement and a previous research of celebrity endorsement has been extensive and and as extensive which and has led to four main model source credibility model source attractiveness model match up model and meaning transfer model these are the four models proposed by erdogan 1999 at the 1999 that the source attractive that the source credibility model refers to did the expertise and the trust of the endorser will influence the consumer expertise and the trust of the endorser will influence the consumer towards the product and also the physical attractiveness of the product was seen as a catalyst for the source source attractiveness model and the match up model proposed that the fit between the product fit between the endorser and the endorser product 
and also the mc krahan 1989 suggests that celebrity endorsed a set of meaning that the meaning will be transferred towards the product by their endorsement and the source attractive model source credibility model and the meaning transfer model and match up model have been proposed by the four researcher kamins tilson tillan busler and kamins 1990 and mc krahan 1999 Previous research in the area of celebrity endorsement on consumer behavior has largely adopted through the experimental design approach to influence the consumer attitude towards the celebrity endorsement. According to Nolan Matz, the celebrity endorsement attempts to influence the consumer at three levels: cognitive level, cognitive level, affective level. And our research has focused on affective level. by affect impact affective level by the affect impact by using the sentiment analysis of consumer responses to celebrity advertisement by using the sentiment analysis only our researchers find the affect impact of celebrity endorsement and this comes up with what is sentiment analysis sentiment analysis is also called as opinion mining and it's one of the recent emerging research area in information processing which is proposed by serrano and gurano etal 2015 several techniques and software tools have been developed to analyze the people attitude opinion and views while analyzing the people attitude the qualitative data has been proposed qualitative data has been proposed sorry sorry Uh, qualitative data has been proposed by crowner theory thematic analysis this kind of theory are used for analyzing the qualitative data and sentiment analysis is one of the opinion mining which uses the lexicon dictionary by using the lexicon dictionary it gives the sentiment score for the words while doing the sentiment analysis the sentiment analysis was going to carried out on the text the text contain not only factual content but also the subjective content i am just saying that that the subjective content is refers to emotion and attitude the main objective of the sentiment analysis is to determine whether a text is subjective if so then the sentiment analysis process can be carried out and the positive or negative words can be preferred sentiment is one of the interest of both marketers and the consumer marketers are using the sentiment analysis for analyzing the product review data by analyzing the product review data the sentiment score of the product has been analyzed by the analyze the product emotion can be carried out by the marketers so our research objective you was used to sentiment analysis to calculate the sentiment score of the celebrity endorsed advertisement our review of literature has revealed that the usage of sentiment analysis to understand the impact of celebrity endorser in advertisement has not been examined previous study have focus on what condition focus on what condition celebrity are appropriate on product the match up hypothesis proposed by cummins 1990 that the celebrity endorsement create an impact when there is a fit between the endorser and the endorser product and here when we are coming with the fit we are saying about a congruence so according to misra and pity congruence in celebrity endorsement is defined as a context where the highly relevant characteristic of the spokesperson are consistent with the highly relevant attributes of the brand since they did not define what the highly relevant characteristics subsequent subsequent such study are uh, center around the studying them Several research studies on match-up hypothesis have concentrated on the match between the physical attractiveness of the endorser and the brand. For example, a physically attractive flip actress endorses endorsing a beauty cosmetics. Expertise, credibility, trustworthiness, personality, and self-image have also been examined in this context. Logically, there must to be a logically there must be a fit between a celebrity endorse fit between a celebrity endorser characteristic and the brand. when the endorser and the endorser product matches the consumer brand attitude is more favorable for example an athlete endorsing a sports shoe there is a match and if he is seen endorsing a ice cream there is a bad match the degree of congruence between the brand and the celebrity represents the main criteria for selecting the selecting the spokesperson for their advertisement congruence is an area according to whom can whom 2018 congruence is the area that requires further research when there is a congruence between the celebrity and the brand it is likely there will be a positive evaluation of brand endorser and this led us the hypothesis one 
there will be a significant difference in sentiment score for celebrity and brand with high congruence than with low congruence. The effectiveness of endorsement depend on consumer relationship strength with the level of endorsement by celebrity. The level of endorsement frequency by celebrity tends to be different. Consumers are exposed to celebrity endorsement several times in different media like television, print, radio, outdoor, and on social media. When consumers interact frequently with the celebrity across this media, they develop a stronger relationship with the endorser. And celebrity endorsement can be viewed as using the classical conditioning group and greater pairing may lead to stronger effect. The usage of celebrity endorsement through, through television and social media will increase the effectiveness of both endorser and endorser object. Endorser advertisement broadcastly contaminatory on television and social media will tend to increase the relationship between the endorser and the viewers. Changanshu. The high frequency of contemplating an advertisement will increase the awareness of the endorser, which is the statement proposed by Rubin and Ugg. The use of celebrity endorsement through multiple communication medium will increase the attention of viewer towards the endorser. The high interaction frequency of the endorser will spiral the relationship between the consumer and the endorser. Frequent appearance of celebrity endorser will escalate the feelings of consumer towards the celebrity, which is proposed by Woodson Berkler. Thus, the celebrity endorser will search the purchase intention and brand attractiveness. This led us to our second hypothesis. There will be a significant difference between sentiment score of celebrity whose frequency of endorsement is high and low. And these are the two hypotheses on base of the above literature review, the two literature Two hypotheses has been formed. H1, there will be a significant difference in sentiment score for celebrity and celebrity and brand with the high congruence than with low congruence. H2, there will be a significant difference in sentiment score of celebrity whose frequency of endorsement is high than low. In this research, we have attempted to study the matchup hypothesis using a sports person, PV Sindhu. And a Gat Road Energy, and we have taken the advertisement of Gat Road Energy, energy Drink for PV Sindhu matchup hypothesis. And at the same time, we use the same celebrity endorsement of PV Sindhu for the Nokia phone advertisement. And this has been taken for the congruence and incongruence one. And also for high frequency and low frequency, we have taken the Pirat Kohli for high frequency endorser in Puma Su ad, and also Rogit Sarma for low frequency low frequency endorser in Adidas so ad. And for this, the research methodology has been carried out through the qualitative study methodology. For, for going with this qualitative study methodology, we have taken the approach of interpretive approach. By the use of this approach, the experiment was conducted with the four different advertisements, which I have said before itself, PV Sindhu in Ketrode Energy Drink for match, PV Sindhu in Nokia phone for mismatch, at the same time, Virat Kohli in Puma Su ad for high frequency and Rohit Sarma in Adidas Su ad for low frequency. And these four ads were taken for testing the H1 and H2. To understand the emotions of the respondents towards the advertisement, we were planned to take the we were planned to take the data from the four group of four group of college students. That for by showing the advertisement to the four group of college students, we were asked to write the five words about the advertisement in a paper. After collecting the word, after collecting the word, the sentiment score associated with the word has been calculated by using the sentiment or plugin, using the sentiment or plugin, which is in our studio. And the sentiment analysis has carried out, which uses lexicon dictionary by the sentiment score. We calculate the sentiment score of the word. For collecting the data, we have used the purposive sampling. By using the purposive sampling, we have collected data. And the collected data have been analyzed by sentiment analysis process, sentiment R, which is the R Studio plugin. And the research aimed to highlight the difference in respondent sentiment between congruent and incongruent, high frequency and low frequency by featuring the advertisement and the sentiment score of the respondent data was analyzed. And these are the ad for congruent PV Sindhu, Catrode Energy Thing. We have collected 735 votes. And incongruent PV Sindhu Nokia phone, we have collected 740 votes. And high frequency Virat Kohli Pumasu, we have collected 730 votes. For low frequency, 
Rohit Sharma Adidas Su. We have 745 votes. Totally, we have collected 2,950 votes, and these 2,950 votes collected from nearly 590 students. After collecting the data, sentiment analysis has been carried out. After sentiment carrying out the sentiment analysis, the sentiment score associated with the words has been calculated through sentiment. And this gives the sentiment score. And, and for congruent endos at the sentiment, the mean sentiment score is get up to a 0 0.2907. And this mean score indicates that, that the congruence endos at has more emotions. And it gives the idea that congruent endos add is has more emotions. And from the one way ANOVA, which is summarized in the table, to it is found that congruent endos advertisement has received significantly high sentiment score compared to in congruent endos advertisement. And for low and high frequency for low frequency and high frequency. For low frequency and high frequency, we have used we have used the Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma, in which high frequency endorser ad has received 0 0.2384 mean sentiment score, and low, low, low frequency endorser ad has received 0 0.1884. The peoples are watching carefully whether when the it also confirming the hypothesis too, whether the celebrity has more relationship with the people by appearing frequently, they will get high mean score. And from the one way ano result summarized in the table three, it is found that high frequency endorser has received high significant score compared to low, fre low frequency endorser. Theoretical implementation. We have used sentiment analysis and calculate the sentiment score to capture the effect impact of endorsement in advertising. Several studies on the matchup hypothesis have focused on the physical attractiveness, physical attractiveness of the endorser, till and personal. This may be true in case of physical attractiveness too, where attractive endorsers are used to market brand that increase attractiveness, for example, in cosmetic category. Our first experiment has shown that the celebrity product fit is important to create a higher emotional impact, favorable attitude among consumers, as the sentiment score pair higher for the congruent pair of sports person, sport drink combination. Our outcomes are in line with the fittingness between the product and model proposed by Kanugo and Pang, 1973. Till and Bustler have also demonstrated two rare experiments that this brand endorser congruence led to favorable brand attitude. More recently, Wright 2016 has proposed that energy you by using the energy bar drink, he has analyzed the matchup hypothesis by using the actor and spokesperson. Whenever the incongruence was present, for example, for example, athlete using the candy bar, athlete endorsing a candy bar, it that will be a lower effect, lower impact effect on the consumer. It means that the consumer do actually think about the match between the endorser and the product before they engage in the effective evaluation of the advertisement. The current research also shown that the sentiment are more positive for the congruent advertising, highlighting the importance of this factor for marketing. The frequency of endorser by endorser as in our study received highest sentiment score. The advertising featuring Virat Kohli and endorser who endorses several brands has received a year impact than the advertisement by Rohit Sharma, who is a low frequency endorser. In the case of endorser frequency, our findings are in line with previous research by Rice ET.AL 2012, who have found that multiple endorsers by a celebrity and a brand congruent condition led to favorable brand attitude. Further, as celebrities are now active on social media, it has given rise to greater frequency of interaction with consumer. This gives the consumer a feeling that he knows the celebrity intimately. Avan Labruchadne have found that this attachment to the celebrity divine by social media interactive transfer has positive attitude towards the brand endorse. Earlier, Chang and So have, also have opened those endorsers may not be effective if they do not maintain a relationship on social media with consumer. And he said that, that, the, that the endorser want to maintain a relationship with the consumer by appearing various advertisement. The frequency of the engagement is increasingly being viewed as a necessary for positive brand attitude. However, Novel Match 2017 in their meta-analysis have focused on that endorsement frequency had no impact on consumer response. Managerial implications. 
our study as important managerial imperialism. The choice of celebrity has always an important decision for marketer. The risk associated with the selection of inappropriate celebrity for endorsement or I. Celebrity endorser demand exorbitant sums for agreeing to endorse brand. It is therefore important for marketers to understand fully how consumer are reacting and responding to celebrity endorsed advertising. They need to identify the right criteria and responding right criteria and the approach for selection of the celebrity so that all the positive aspect of employing endorser accrues to the brand. Who is shown in the advertising using the product carries a lot of impact with the consumer. A lot of attention has been given to the factor leading to successful celebrity endorsement advertisement by research. This research has shown that in Indian context, celebrity brand congruence and celebrity frequency have a positive impact at the effect level among consumers through the measurement of sentiment score. Good match and high frequency endorser who should be favored in the selection of celebrity. Agenda for future research. The result of our present study suggests several areas of future research. Our study has demonstrated the sentiment analysis process can be an effective way of studying the impact created by celebrity advertisement. Other proportions like gender, type, endorser familiarity, endorser expertise, and endorser attractiveness, endorser implicit, explicit endorsement could be further studied using the sentiment analysis approach. It can be further be extended to brand attitude and intention to purchase. Our present study has limitation of using students as respondents and the result may not be generalized among consumers. Further research can be carried out with the different brand and category among consumers of different age group and this may yield stronger confirmation of endorsement success pattern. The study was made to identify the effectiveness of celebrity endorser and frequency. Sentiment analysis process has been carried out for measuring the effectiveness of celebrity endorsement. The celebrity endorsement was done by computing the sentiment score for the congruent, incongruent endorser and high and low frequency endorsers through sentiment R. Then that the sentiment score was analyzed and the result shows that high sentiment score for the congruent endorser than incongruent one and high frequency endorser than low frequency endorser. By this, the study revealed that the congruent endorser performed better than incongruent endorser and high frequency endorser performed better than low frequency endorser. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We can have some questions now. Thank you. Already Sagar has given a suggestion. So just go through that and maybe try to incorporate Shiva. Okay, sir. Yes, Pradeep, you can type your question. I don't think the moderators are allowing questions to be spoken out, but you can write it down. Sumit is asking which dictionary you have used for analysis. Sir, lexicon dictionary, sir. Sir, in R studio, they have they have a plugin sentiment R that the sentiment R as using the lexicon dictionary, which has the sentiment score, which has the score plus one to minus one score for the word. By that, the word sentiment depend upon the sentiment, the associated score has been proposed. So he's again asking which set of emotions we have we have given we have asked in our experimental design we have showed advertisement towards the student and we asked to write about the advertisement why the people's writing about the advertisement they will show their subjective content that uh, about the advertisement color about the advertisement actor through the emotion which is shown as a affective emotions anyone else I have a question. Um, I have not typed it though. So uh, please, please do that. Like... I mean, uh, please type it because else we'll be giving you an unfair advantage. I think everybody okay. should have that. Sure, sure. So I'll just type it. Please. Sumit, I think it will be better if you take this uh, in private discussion with Shiva because then we'll we'll give others a chance also. In between. Uh, Benifer Fernandez has asked a question, how do you gauge a trade-off between short-term and long-term sentiment score when it comes to brand engagement? Specifically talking about a situation where a celebrity like Shahrukh Khan was taken on multiple advertisement because of his son's Aryan Khan's controversy. 
so that the research has proposed that high frequency endorser will get will get a centimeter score because the according to classical conditioning theory proposed by the researcher they have said that why when the consumer or when the respondents are watching the celebrity frequently they will create a relationship with them and we can answer it as a psychological thing itself by seeing a person many times we can create a relationship with them itself without any meaning itself without any relationship with any personal relationship the relationship will get automatically created with the other persons i think i mean anyway the, i think the question was more specific to how does sentiment it. change over time mm. and how does it really relate to the consumer but anyway uh, mm. i have one two observations which are actually both very uh, critical issues okay, the sir. first thing is that your paper has one of these q questions which for which a lot of big journals reject papers nothing wrong but nothing new so if you are saying that positive sentiments will be there if congruence is there and positive sentiments will be there if frequency of endorsement is low the very second question comes from a reviewer is so that is very obvious so what's so new about it because at the end of the day congruence theory is all about that only so you have to come up with a defense or you have to craft your paper so that you don't end up having this question Yes. second part is where you are talking about your design you are actually using rohit sharma as a low frequency endorser right yes sir yes rohit sir. sharma has more than 20 endorsements yes sir so how do you define low frequency sir we have defined a low frequency means at the time of selecting the endorsement hmm. the endorsement personality will get affected while the virat kohli if i am selecting virat kohli and the sikha dawat means that the Personality itself get no no hold on hold on mm. hold on you are saying mm. high frequency and low frequency right yes sir yes sir so what only what is frequency Far... sir frequency means it is the appearance appearance sir. if we are watching the TV means we are frequently watching the Virat Kohli than Rohit Sharma that the normal people watching the Virat Kohli than Rohit Sharma are you ours... sure yes are sir you sure yes no. sir because that is actually mm. now you are creating more questions for yourself. that will depend on the type of channel i am watching the type of show i am watching right yes sir there is an objective measure can be how many endorsements does rohit sharma have in 2021 how mm. many endorsements does virat kohli have in 2021 right yes sir yes sir and if you are saying that you are watching less the mm. statistics says that rohit sharma has 20 endorsements mm. right yes, which sir. means definitely somewhere some people are watching right yes sir maybe you are not watching because he is not endorsing the right it's for the not target audience right yes sir yes sir so that sir. question be prepared for you don't have to answer it now oh okay sir okay sir be prepared Thanks. for it this question okay, will definitely come okay okay sir uh, any more questions no i think it's done so we can take a long break and when is the next panel is 345 uh, 345 right or we can yes. actually take a break now and come back at 3:30 if the presenter is ready or we can do this. that way we save some time if the presenter is okay if the okay. is the presenter here uh we'll have I'm to present oh, yeah i'm here and um, yeah if required i can present now too and then maybe have a break i mean either way uh, works i'm also okay with that because we have time yeah that's fine yeah so let's get get at anyway uh, uh, they are not giving <coughs> tea to us we have to make our own so better we present and finish and then get at with that right yeah i can i can do that thank okay. you okay okay um i will um, share my screen are you sure you'll be able to finish 39 slides within 20 minutes um well uh, yeah probably about 20 25 minutes um, um okay the some of these are references uh, that i've added at the end um so so good afternoon uh, my name is pradeep i am um, a uh, phd scholar at iit madras and uh, this topic is on understanding the effect of brand and product design in uh, product as a service 
uh, product as a service is uh, getting a lot of uh, attention from academia as well as from industry. And um, we look at this um, in the automotive context by looking at uh, customers lease versus buy decisions of car. So leasing is a, an example of product as a service. And then we are trying to look at the effect of product design and brand in this decision. A um, little bit of background on product as a service. Um, companies, typically traditional product companies are looking at ways to um, um, increase the market share, improve customer satisfaction, um, moving up the value chain. And one way for them to achieve this is by, is by combining services along with products. This is known as product service systems. And um, services can be either added to a product, a physical product, in which case it is known as a product as a service. And sometimes um, products are added to existing services, uh, for example, Amazon, Kindle, Amazon Echo, uh, these kind of uh, uh, are, are uh, products added to services to make the uh, you know, services uh, you know, uh, go better. Um, so um, uh, the underlying concept is that the products and services are offered as one bundle. Um, and um, the, in such a model, um, in a past model, product as a service model, um, customers pay for outcomes and not for the product. For example, in a car lease, customers use for the for, for customers pay for using the car and not for the car itself. They don't buy the car. Companies retain ownership of the product of the car and they offer it to maybe one customer or maybe it can be multiple customers. So in such cases, customer becomes more of a user of a service as opposed to owner of a product. In this case, a car. Now, literature says that uh, every product is a service waiting to happen. Now, such a business model um, in automotive industry, uh, well, in, in general product industry, um, I have listed here, Rolls-Royce is uh, one well-known example. Rolls-Royce engines for the, uh, for the aircraft, they lease out to airlines, and airlines don't buy the engines, but they pay to Rolls-Royce for using the engine. They, they pay uh, for the power that is produced by the engines by the hour. And there are other examples given here. Michelin, for truck companies, they offer tires as a service. Uh, the truck companies don't buy tires, but they pay to Michelin uh, for the amount of the, or for the miles that are driven. Um, maintenance or servicing or replacement of the tires are done by Michelin. Uh, some other examples are given here. And one extreme form of um, product service system is, um, is uh, the streaming services. Spotify, Netflix, for example, have replaced completely the traditional old form of CDs and DVDs. This is known as dematerialization. Similarly, in the automotive industry, um, in many markets, there are examples of car share, car lease, or major automotive OEMs have come together to offer uh, various forms of car share, car lease, uh, um, uh, business models, which are successful and unsuccessful also in some cases. And in India, again, most of the major OEMs have now or are now coming out with the car lease, which is an example of uh, product as a service. Not very popular at this part of time, it's speaking up, but almost all companies, all OEMs are there in the market offering this kind of services. One well-known example is uh, Tesla. Tesla has various services. Um, Tesla sells the cars, but uh, they also have other services like self-driving, which is on a subscription basis. People can subscribe to that. This is one form of um, service component uh, bundled into the product um, um, in the automotive industry. Now, there are various benefits uh, to the consumers as well as to the, the manufacturer or the supplier in such an arrangement. For consumers, this would be restructuring of the risk and responsibilities and costs associated with owning a product. Um, it removes you know, the administrative task of monitoring you know, the performance and, uh, you know, and, and it moves to the manufacturer and the main advantage is that uh, there is no upfront cost. Uh, uh, consumers don't buy the product, um, and um, and there's a cost save in some cases or in many cases because because uh, consumers pay only for the actual use of the product. For suppliers and manufacturers, uh, typically uh, traditional product manufacturers, it's about generating new revenue stream, uh, getting into uh, getting into identifying uh, new market opportunities, enhance competitiveness because. Uh, the, the offering, the service plus product offering can be tailor-made to suit uh, various customers. And um, since the manufacturers own the product, 
it's possible to collect data, uh, operational data of these kind of uh, products, and then can be used to improve performance, reduce downtime, make improvements in the product, drives innovation. And um, in, in today's world, it is getting to be very difficult to make uh, technical improvements in products. Uh, I know mostly these are uh, what is possible is small incremental improvements. And in such cases, you know, uh, it, it enables uh, manufacturers to differentiate their product from other competitors by tailoring the service offering. Uh, so these are the advantages. Uh, there are some disadvantages or rather barriers too in implementing a product as a service or product service systems. Now, culturally, this is a challenge to both consumers and providers um, because for consumers, they don't own the product. So they have to you know, uh, place a value um, on having a need met instead of owning a product. Uh, in our kind of um, culture, we value owning a product. So that is a, a cultural barrier that the customers have to overcome. Um, this is, this uh, is successful in certain countries, Scandinavian countries, but not so much uh, successful in um, our kind of culture. For the co company also, it's a cultural shift. They have to earn more by selling services um, than selling products. So for traditional product companies, it's a new way of uh, generating money, gaining profit, um, more way, a different way of operating profit. That can be a cultural change within the entire organization. And there is also um, a case where mostly PaaS or product as a service is suitable for high value products and, um, uh, and uh, not so much for smaller value products where residual value is not there. Um, um, now, uh, coming to the literature review and then talking about uh, this study, um, uh, uh, the details of that. Um, so most of the literature talks about uh, insufficient work carried out um, on successful PSS applications. There's a need for new and more studies, first of all. Uh, this is uh, an emerging, this is a uh, topic which is uh, getting a lot of attention over number of studies are not there, particularly on successful PSS, PSS application, product service service, product service system applications. And um, the existing studies are mostly on, uh, straight, uh, mostly on uh, organizational um, or business levels. Um, most of these are conceptual uh, models, uh, quantitative studies, empirical investigations are lacking. And um, one of the main barrier is uh, customer acceptance of PSS for the reason that we talked about earlier. And there are limited studies on consumer behavior related to product service systems. So these are some of the gaps. Um, now, from a product perspective, you know, we define product as a vehicle uh, for delivering value uh, to the customer. The customer needs to be met. And product is a vehicle for delivering this need to the customer. Um, now, product design, it is very important to get the product design right because product design is a very lengthy process, very costly process. And once the product is out in the market, it is very difficult to change the design. Now, uh, there isn't much uh, literature available which talks about, uh, which looks at uh, product design from a product service system or from a past perspective. Is there a need to tailor the product design to suit uh, a past? Uh, that kind of uh, literature is uh, uh, kind of lacking. So one of the research questions that we are trying to uh, address is uh, how important is product design in terms of the attribute of a product for consumers adopting PaaS, in this example, uh, in this case, car lease, in comparison to the traditional ownership model, and does the product need to undergo any change to suit the PaaS model? So that's one of the research questions. And the second one is on the, uh, on the brand element of a product. So brand is one of the major extrinsic attribute of a product, and um, the, the, the service element which is added to the product, Product service system um, brings in uh, some kind of a, brings in relational exchanges with the customers, and then you know there is an emotional connect that is happening, and um, and brand is one way of looking at that uh, consumer mindset and the emotions that is uh, evoked in the minds of the customer. So the second research question is about understanding how important is brand in consumers adopting past model, and uh, does the brand strategy of the company. Uh, will it need to undergo any change to suit the past model? And there are other insights also that we want to draw from the study. For example, the socioeconomic factors, how does it weigh on this comparison? People buying a car versus people leasing a car, does uh, the socioeconomic factor uh, play, play, play a, 
uh, a part. And um, other insights that we wanted to understand is uh, from a practitioner's point of view, uh, people who are used to owning uh, a car, not the traditional ownership, uh, people are used to that, how willing or how uh, happy or how hesitant they are, how much hesitant they are in, in shifting to a past kind of a model. And uh, if that's the case, uh, what are the enablers that uh, companies can put in place to help these consumers make this shift? So this is the direction that we wanted to uh, proceed with this study, um, which is in progress now. But uh, talking about the research methodology, so this study analyzes uh, an existing past example, which is uh, the car lease uh, that I already touched upon, empirically from an outside perspective, from user perspective, and um, and uh, to understand the effect of product design and brand, the main intrinsic and extrinsic factors for product on lease versus buy decisions. So this uh, kind of addresses the gap that we were talking about that we were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, most of the literature being uh, conceptual, high level. Um, and uh, not empirical. Um, so uh, let's see, let's see um, um, the approach that we're taking the study. Um, so what uh, we have done is to roll out a, an electronic survey, nationwide survey of uh, survey uh, to car owners as well as uh, lease car users. So we sent out a car, a, a survey to car owners as well as lease car users in the country, uh, electronic survey. And um, so uh, the measures and the skills that were used in this survey were adapted uh, from existing studies. So the input variable or the factors um, were brand equity as the first uh, um, factor. And the second one was uh, product design uh, in terms of attributes of the product. So brand equity measures were adopted from uh, Lou um, and others, uh, which in turn were drawn from Akers and Keller's conceptualization of brand equity. And um, the product design attributes were drawn from existing studies which is listed uh, here, also from um, you know um, third-party industries, uh, third-party organizations like Consumer Reports in the U.S., which is a, a uh, which which is an organization, independent organization, which evaluates products and provides reports to the consumers. A similar equivalent one to that uh, in China is Auto Home. So we 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 comp we use uh, these to generate our measures for product design for automotive, um, and uh, the response variable is. Uh, buy versus uh, lease um, uh, as reported out by the consumers or, or the people who owned the car or people who leased out the car. And um, being a dichotomous response variable, we have used a logistic, logistic regression for analyzing the, um, the survey responses to come out with inferences uh, of the study. So this is how the, um, in a sense, how the, um, the model looks like uh, or what we're trying to do looks like. The response variable is lease versus buy decision made by the, the survey participants. And the, um, the, the predictors uh, are economic variable, uh, socioeconomic variables, uh, categorical predictors. And, um, and brand equity, which uh, is an existing measure that we have used uh, as one of the predictors, which, which has uh, three components, three elements, brand loyalty, perceived quality, and brand association and awareness. And the product design in terms of the attributes is the second uh, predictor or the third predictor. Um, so this is uh, what uh, we are trying to do. What we were trying to do, and the in terms of the uh, the, the sample size, uh, based on literature, based on the normal uh, uh, available um, um, what you see in the literature, um, we would require minimum of two hundred thirty-three responses from uh, the survey, and uh, and the survey, we we managed to collect three hundred forty-six responses, and um, as far as the survey, there were also some supplementary questions because we want to understand. Uh, um, we wanted to link practical insights from people who actually bought and leased cars. Uh, we wanted to link these uh, to the analytical distance. So there were some open-ended questions also to gain some managerial insights and then link uh, these to the analytical distance. Um, and, and since we were using measures that were already there in the context of uh, this study, we also uh, validated the, um, the reliability and validity of the measures in the context of the study. So, uh, just a snapshot of that. So this is a factor analysis that was done looking at um, the validity. So the uh, the the factor loadings uh, were sufficiently high and the cross factor loadings were low. Uh, the average variance extracted, extracted was high. The correlation metrics, you know, the within factor correlations, within item correlations were high, cross factor correlations were low. 
so which indicated which or indicated uh, that uh, validity is uh, is, is uh, acceptable uh, uh, the previous one was for the first uh, um, factor which was uh, uh, brand equity this one is for the, the second factor which is uh, product design which is also look, which also look good um, uh, reliability um, again um, from the reliability point of view we looked at the crown wax alpha which was sufficiently high uh, composite reliability was sufficiently high, so then we decided to move ahead with the analysis uh, um, based on uh, having established the validity and reliability of the, the measures from the context of the study. Now, um, so um, I, I will uh, explain uh, maybe in the next slides a little more details about this, uh, but this is the results uh, that came out, uh, the, the result of the survey uh, uh, analysis uh, using logistic uh, regression. Um, so brand equity was seen as significant in, um, in buy versus lease decision by uh, customers. And um, um, so within that three elements of brand equity, brand loyalty was significant, perceived quality was not significant, uh, looking at the p-value, and brand awareness association was significant. Product design was not significant. And they, on the uh, other uh, socioeconomic uh, factors, gender was uh, not significant, but occupation travel per day was significant. Uh, overall, the model, the goodness of the fit uh, was uh, acceptable and the measures of association were acceptable. So I think the model itself was fitting well. So I will summarize the, uh, uh, the results. Um, 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 so on the, on, on the research question number one, how important is product design attributes for consumers adopting a past model, which is car lease in comparison to, in comparison to the traditional ownership model. Um, so the analysis did not suggest any significant difference in expectation by consumers on product design. Uh, regardless of buy or lease, consumers had high expectation of product design um, in, the, in the context of the study. Similarly, uh, from a brand perspective, the effect of the brand, um, consumers gave high importance to brand while leasing uh, compared to the buying, uh, compared to buying cars, and um, and within the three elements of brand equity, um, brand loyalty was a significant in uh, in in um, leasing compared to buy. Um, so so um, linking back to uh, linking it to the insights that came from the uh, participants, uh, the open-ended questions. It appears as if uh, because in a past model. Um, people don't own the car. It is owned by the providers or by the manufacturer and uh, consumers pay a monthly rent. Uh, they, the consumers tend to go with, um, um, uh, with brand and then uh, which they are aware, which they, which they have experienced before. The brand loyalty is uh, important in such cases. They don't want to possibly take a risk with an unknown player they are not experienced with. And, um, and, and, um, and, Brand awareness is, itself is not sufficient. The uh, people who lease cars tended also to be loyal to the brand um, when leasing. And um, uh, coming to the perceived quality, there was no um, difference uh, in the expectation of quality in the minds of customers, be it buying a car or being leasing a car. Uh, they had high expectations of quality from, uh, from the brand, regardless of buying or leasing. Um, some other insights that we were able to draw um, this is work in progress, but as of now, uh, so, some of the pointers that came through um, are that um, um, consumers are generally satisfied. Um, their needs were being met by lease. That's how they, what, what they reported out. Uh, significant majority were happy with the lease experience. Their, their needs were being met. Um, and, um, and they valued lease. Uh, people who lease reported that they value lease uh, because of the convenience and flexibility it offers. Uh, uh, they could change cars uh, once in a while. It is possible for them to go to a higher segment car when, if they so wish. And also for the economic reasons, uh, uh, for some uh, consumers, it is, uh, they, they find it uh, economical to lease out cars and buy cars, paying an upfront uh, amount. And um, it also appears that uh, um, people who have leased cars previously are more willing to lease again, um, and uh, conversely, people who have people who are accustomed to buying a car were not so much willing to 
try out uh, leasing of the cars. Um, and their unwillings, unwillingness to lease uh, cars uh, or to go into a past model uh, in, the, in, the, in this context of the study uh, was, uh, was partly because uh, from their perspective, monthly lease was not uh, very economical um, and, um, and lack of ownership. I think this is one of the known uh, barriers in implementing product as a service or product service system, which is reported in literature which is kind of, this is, this is kind of validating that lack of ownership is one of the main reason, one of the uh, significant, one of the major reason why, why, why participants reported out that they are not uh, willing to consider uh, leasing of the cars. And they were also not uh, comfortable with uh, the contractual and the lease commitment that is needed in signing a contract uh, with the lease provider. Um, so, um, so maybe I will, uh, uh, stop at this point. This is the results that have come through at this point of time and uh, stop maybe for any questions and also from inputs uh, that I could use uh, for this study um, going forward. Um, thank you. Okay. Pradeep, you already have a question. So I'll read it out even I didn't fully understand what it is. But there is a possibility of person in both category like have his own car and use often the lease service. And why did you use purely categorical dichotomous questionnaire? We asked the same question in form of intention as the intention to go with the particular category. Um, um, well, so let me try to answer the question uh, on my, uh, based on what I've understood. So we sent out a survey to people who, who, who own cars and uh, asked them to respond to the survey questionnaire on their, uh, on their ownership of the car, what they think about the brand of the car they own, what they think about the, the, the product design of the car they own. So their responses were expected to be on, the, on their ownership um, um, of the car. Similarly, we sent out uh, uh, survey questionnaires to people who have leased cars. So these are uh, people who have leased out cars and we, aren't, we wanted them, we expected them, we asked them to respond to the survey question based on their experience of having leased a car. So we're talking about uh, a lease uh, uh, where people lease out cars for three to five years, uh, um, you know, as a, um, from, a, from a lease provider, um, a manufacturer or a lease provider. Uh, just to clarify that point, uh, it's not about leasing a car for a short period of time uh, to commute. This is about a long-term lease, uh, three to five years. That is how the lease uh, functions. That's how the lease business model is there in the market here, uh, as well as in other countries. Uh, I hope. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, at least to me, it answers the question because Sumit, I mean, let me just also add to that what Pradeep is trying to say is that the objective in this case was not to use the dependent variable as whether you would like to lease or buy, how much are you intending to lease or buy? It is actually, that is the reason why he's used logistic regression because he's saying, okay, these are the people who lease, these are the people who buy, and then let's me look into what is the back end and then try to predict. So I think I, I got the point also, Pradeep, right? Thank, thank you, so yeah. That, yeah. That. Any more questions? Yes. So uh, let me ask you, Pradeep, something because you are working on this area and this obviously is related to the managerial implication of your study. So as a car company, what is more profitable to me, lease or sell? Um, uh, so uh, as a car company and uh, uh, not, not as a car company, but many of the traditional product companies hmm. are looking at uh, means of getting into some kind of a recurring revenue stream, uh, maybe a subscription, a subscription kind of an offer, um, uh, apart from a pure uh, sales model. Um, Tesla is one example. And most OEMs in India now are offered lease uh, because that's a monthly revenue um, rather than one, um, you know, uh, rather than, uh, you know, selling a car and then getting a revenue. Um, the service component is always there, but, um, um, 
car companies and, and uh, are trying to offer various services, uh, smart driving, uh, hands-free driving, hands-free parking, um, um, and all the uh, you know uh, the navigation systems. At this point of time, they are they are giving it as a part of the that they sell. Slowly, they are trying to make all this as a, as a kind of service they can charge and a subscription on a monthly basis. Uh, apart from selling the car, which is a recurring revenue stream for them, that's the direction which industry is moving. Uh, so, okay. Any more questions? So great. I think Pradeep, you can stop the share. Yep. So I think we all together did a great job because now we have a lot of time for a long break. And uh, after that, you can join the other session. Let me thank yes. all the presenters for being here and participating in the conference and obviously the 50 plus strong audience for patiently waiting and listening. So from my Thanks side, it's lot. over. Let, let's hear from the conference desk. Uh, thank you, Professor Roy, uh, for the panel, for the discussion.